Morning everyone, uh, my name is Lewis Curtis and uh, this is going to be a basic uh, portrait editing tutorial. This is sort of the first step I take um, whenever I'm working on any image. Uh, I've chosen to demonstrate a uh, portrait shot that I have taken. Uh, generally what I do is in the image I begin by opening it up in the Adobe Camera Raw uh, image editor and you do that uh, by control, I mean hitting command R if you're using a PC, you'll be hitting Control R, and this dialog box that we're looking at right here is going to open. Generally, the first thing I do uh, once I've opened an image is I take a look at the exposure, and the image is a little dark, so I am just going to lighten it. You do that by adjusting here the exposure until I feel pretty good about it. In some cases, sometimes you'll see when you're working with an image, you'll see some air blown out areas uh, that'll be indicated, um, and uh, I will just work with it until I'm happy and I feel pretty good about that right there. I feel pretty good about the contrast. We could always adjust it down a little bit. In fact, we'll adjust it down to about right here. And then once you have that image the way that you want it to be, you feel like the density is good, the color is good. don't really feel like I need to make any kind of a color adjustment. The background looks the way it's supposed to. One of the things you're going to find when working with people uh, is that everyone can have a different skin color value and uh, where I work generally I have a canvas background which looks the same and I could photograph two, three, ten, twenty people with the same background, pull up the image, the background will look the same but the skin value will be a little different. Um, some people may have a little more pinkish, reddish color, some will have a normal color and some may actually look a little more yellow. And so um, anyway I generally work so that the background is consistent. Um, I also shoot with the camera set it at uh, 500 degrees, 5,000 degrees Kelvin, so that the color temperature remains consistent versus using it in all of balance mode. So when you're working with this kind of a situation, you want to have consistency from one image to the next. Once again, once we have the image uh, looking the way we want it to, we're going to go ahead and click Open Image, and the image is going to launch in Photoshop for us. And there we go. Now, one of the additional uh, things that we have in Photoshop is that um, you can change the window panel by hitting the letter F key and you'll sign, uh, see that the F key sort of just toggles the image and you can see here I'm just hitting it three times and it changes each time. This is our window pane view and this is our view with the gray background and our view with the black. Uh, my personal preference is to use the gray background. It's uh, a neutral value and I just uh, prefer it. Other people may have other ways that they work with it, but this is uh, the way I seem to feel comfortable with. And again, anything I demonstrate here, you know, it's really up to you uh, to develop your own style and your own technique. Uh, I don't think there's any really hard and fast rules. It's really about what works for you. So here now we have the image open, and uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Now you can zoom in and out of, up with an image uh, on a Mac by hitting Command uh, Plus or uh, Command Minus, Command Plus zooms it in and command minus zooms it back out uh, on a PC that will be control plus or control minus to do the same thing. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and take an initial look. The next thing I will generally do uh, with most of my images is I will uh, immediately sharpen the image. Now I work with a specific file size. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, I shoot with Nikon. Um, Nikon by default the uh, image and in fact we can actually do this. Let's Let's hit the crop tool, which is right here. We'll click that and we'll do a front image. And this will tell us that my image size is a little more than 7 inches by a little bit more than 10 inches. And the resolution is 300. Nikon, uh, by default, the images will always show up with a resolution of 300. I've discovered on Canons that the resolution will end up usually being 72. And the scaling here will be much larger. And this is where you're going to want to go into uh, the actual image uh, and make an adjustment. That's something I'll get into at some other time. Let's get back to looking at this. Um, so now uh, I know my image size, I know my resolution. By default 300 dpi is printer resolution. So if you're going to make some prints on your desktop, that sort of thing, you want the resolution to be 300. Okay, so um, now that I've, I see my density looks good. Um, I feel comfortable with uh, the color balance and all that. Now the next thing I want to do, I usually kind of start with the um, 
with the unsharp mask and what we'll do is go up to filter and we'll go to sharpen and then unsharp mask a little dialog is going to show up here basically this is something where you're going to want to feel out and take a look at your images uh, yourself and determine based on the resolution and size what sort of uh, unsharp uh, mask level amount you want to be set at I found that with the images that I'm working with and the sizing this is basically where I'm at 150 is the amount radius 1.0 threshold 0 and then I'll click go ahead and click OK and uh, it's been applied now one of the things you can do as well which is really helpful is I go back to the F and you'll see I'm at 66.7 on my uh, magnification and I'm just going to plus that up to 100 percent and so this gives you a really good idea Now, one of the things you can do also with with Photoshop is you can hit command Z and command Z reverts your last filter action and this is what uh, the image right now looks as it would look without the unsharp mask being applied I'm going to hit command Z again and now we bring back that filter effect again it's a toggle and it toggles back one action okay now if, if you decide three or four uh, history levels later that you didn't like this you're not going to be able to hit the command Z to revert it it just goes back again one one filter action so I'm, I'm, I feel very good about uh, the way the sharpening looks I want again get away from the window pane view and get back to my gray alright so here we are the next thing I address and again this is a personal preference I don't generally like to have more than one catch light in an eye when I'm doing studio work uh, I learned a long time ago um, we have one sun one light source and, and that is the sun and so generally I, I like to remove the secondary catch lights in this case there's a couple different ways of doing that uh, one way is you can go to your stamp tool uh, the speed key for the stamp tool is S on your screen here this would be your stamp tool and so um, you can either get to that and I'll hit the crop so you can see you can either get to that by hitting the S which will get you there or again by clicking crop tools the same way you can either click to get to the crop tool okay or you can click the letter C key and that will immediately get you there one of the things you'll find with Photoshop is using speed keys uh, makes it uh, a little bit faster and a little bit effortless and so I'm going to again going to go back to my stamp tool hit the letter S and I'm going to show you here that what we can basically do is use the stamp tool to go in here and remove this other catch light now what I'm doing any um, any tool that you're using you can increase or decrease the size of that tool by by hitting the bracket key uh, the lower bracket the left bracket uh, will make it smaller the right bracket will make it larger so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit here until I feel comfortable with it now I'm gonna hit the alt key and click and I basically have just sampled this black area and now I'm gonna go in here after sampling and go in and remove that catch light and I'm going to do the same thing over here with the left eye and I'm just going to click it until I feel happy about it and there we go we removed it now that's just one option again the other other option that you potentially could have is you could just select the brush tool and the brush tool is right here and the speed key for the brush tool is the B now if you ever wonder what the speed key uh, is as you see when I go over the the actual tool it has a brush tool and then in brackets it's got the B and that basically is letting you know that the B is your speed key also if you click and hold you'll see that it shows a B next to the tools and again that's just telling you which one is your speed key alright so now I've selected my brush if you come up here to the top you'll see that there's an opacity setting and a flow setting for the brush um, the higher that this value is on both sides the um, the faster or the more density that the brush is going to give you. Now, um, basically, I've set it at 100%, and I am going to start my little brush. Now, you see, I just did that intentionally. You'll see that the color that we've got right now is not the color we we want. Now, I just pressed and held that uh, just once, and so again, I can just hit the Command Z or Control Z, and I'm going to remove what I just did. What you see here is you see a couple of little windows and this top uh, layer window indicates the current color value uh, that is being used if you're not happy with that color in this case I'm not uh, then basically what you want to do uh, you have a couple options you can hit the alt key and I can come in here and sample from this area of the eye or what I can do is come over here to my uh, swatches and I can actually click on the black generally I am going to select 
from this area because I want it to resemble that same color value. And then once I've done that, I can just come in here and use the brush tool and brush away that catch light. And there we go, all gone. So now you see there's two different ways of handling one with the stamp tool and one with the brush tool. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Usually whenever I do something in Photoshop like that, I sort of like to back off and see what it looks like uh, normal. And I feel like that looks really good. All right. Now the next thing I am going to address is I am going to address uh, basically skin imperfections and, and stuff like that. Basically, I tend to, uh, you're going to want to come over to the stamp tool again. I'm sorry, not the stamp tool, the, um, the healing tool. And I tend to go with the healing brush tool, and that's the J key. And uh, I will toggle up and down the brush size based on what I'm going to work on. And I, uh, with this particular brush, you click the Alt key to sample. And then you're going to come in there and work through the different areas that you don't like. And again, I'm going to sample there. And I, I tend to sample quite a bit. And I am going to just clean up very quickly here areas uh, of this image that I don't like. Now, what I tend to do, this is like a birthmark here, and I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to mess with that. I want the person to still look uh, pretty much how they are. And again, I'm just going through here and just cleaning up areas that I'm not real happy with. And again, if you do something immediately that you don't like, hit, com hit Command Z or Control Z uh, to revert whatever it was that happened. If you have to go back further than that, you can go into your history palette uh, and handle it that way. And we've got one thing you'll find about photographing people photos is that um, you never really notice all the imperfections until you pull them up and you have some time to actually look at them. One of the things you have to be careful about with this particular hitting brush is that when you get close to an area like the lips or close to an inch, here I'll show you. Let's say I want to work on this spot here. Um, I'll select and then I'll brush in. You'll see, well it didn't happen that time, but sometimes there's a tendency to pick up uh, some dark area from the edge and it just uh, doesn't look too good. So sometimes you actually have to go back to the stamp tool and kind of work it that way. Again, we're just going through here quickly, cleaning up um, some of the areas on here that we don't like so much, even that little hot spot. And um, if you don't like a certain area, you can always come in and I'm not sure I like that too much. I'm going to back up a little bit on my history. Here we go. And and again, I'm just going to scan. Okay, I see some area here that I don't necessarily like. I'm going to fix that. And again, I'm just using the, the healing brush. Now there's some other tools, some other um, healing brush options that you can play with. This is just my preference. I tend to like this one the most. just about done here. I don't necessarily like that. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller for this area here. Alright, I feel uh, pretty good about that. I'm just trying again, trying to see areas that seem to be a distraction, seem to draw my eye. I don't even like this little spot on the tooth here just trying to I would mess with this scar but that's really something that's part of him and again I'm just about done here um, all right so that's my basic initial uh, portrait correction or image correction um, steps and I feel good about this image um, don't feel like there's anything else I need to do here now what I will do is I will go ahead and you can either go file, save as. One of the things I don't ever do is I don't ever um, save over an original. I will rename it. Now again you have two ways of saving the image. You can do it the way I just did which was file and save or you can go 
control um, command S which will pull up the um, dialog box and I am going to remove that R and I'm going to put an A here so this shows me this is my first uh, image uh, correction file and I will save it and there we go I've completed that process and that image is done it's uh, it's actually very usable uh, photo there's some other things I would do to it and I will demonstrate some further retouching techniques in my next video